When testing resistance, the idea was to achieve an equal amount of horizontal and vertical deflection in the analog signature. This concept holds true for capacitive signatures as well. The elliptical shape of a capacitive signature occurs because of the component's reactance to the tracker's AC signal. This is known as capacitive reactance, where the nature of a capacitor to hold a charge causes a phase shift between current and voltage. This means that the tracker frequency setting becomes a factor when selecting the tracker range. The capacitive elliptical signature on the left provides a much better indication of the component health than the signature on the right. The difference between the two is the range settings. Note the range settings at the top of the tracker display. Again, the goal is to set the tracker range parameters to provide a useful signature. With capacitive signatures, the larger the value, the lower the tracker resistance and frequency settings. Testing this 220 microfarad capacitor using the 20 ohms at 60 hertz range setting provides an even signature. As the capacitive value decreases, the resistance and frequency range settings increase to provide a descriptive signatures. Here is a 100 picofarad capacitor using the 100 k ohm resistance and 5 kilohertz frequency settings. Degradation in capacitors is a common problem. This signature in green shows a good 100 microfarad capacitor compared to a degraded one shown in red. Note the change in width and angle. This type of failure is sometimes referred to as leakage. A common test method for electrolytic capacitors among tracker users is to set the tracker to a 10 k ohm or 20 k ohm range, hold the common probe to PCB ground, and use the red signal probe to test the top of each electrolytic capacitor. Watch for signatures that show capacitive leakage to indicate a bad capacitor. When a bad capacitor is detected, it is marked for replacement. This method works because the metal top of the cap is electrically connected to the electrolyte inside the device. This is a sure way to quickly spot leaky caps. Inductive components generally provide signatures similar to capacitors, but the adjustment of the range settings is somewhat different. As the value gets smaller, the resistance range decreases and the frequency range increases due to the reduced number of wire turns in the component. As the number of wire turns increases, the component reactance or resistance to current flow occurs at lower frequencies, so the tracker frequency will also be lower. Here is the signature of a 1500 microhenry inductor using the 20 ohm resistance and the 1 kilohertz frequency ranges. The ellipse width is a factor of the component value. The signature angle is a result of the wire resistance. This smaller 68 microhenry inductor is using the 10 ohm resistance and 5 kilohertz frequency ranges. The signature is similar, but changes to the tracker range were necessary because of the reduced value. Here is a comparison of a known good inductor in green and one that has internally shorted windings in red. Because some of the wire turns are being bypassed on the bad component, it displayed less resistance and a change in width. Sometimes the use of a tracker is said to check for component health, which really means you are looking at the electrical or physical nature of the component. If something physically changes about the component, then its electrical nature will change as well. To illustrate this point, here is a live signature of a single winding on a stepper motor. Physically turning the motor shaft changes the electrical nature of the inductive winding, and this is reflected in the tracker signature. Resistors, capacitors, and inductors may all be considered passive devices since, in theory, their values remain the same regardless of the voltage applied. As an example, here is the stepper motor winding using the tracker range of 3 volts, 20 ohms, at 1 kilohertz. The tracker voltage range is now changed to 200 millivolts. Notice the signature has not changed, so the voltage setting is not important to getting a usable analog signature. For more information, you can always contact Huntron Technical Support by telephone or email. And be sure to check out the other videos available on the Huntron YouTube channel. 
As always, thank you for watching.